Once your virtual machine status is running, and I mean running, sometimes it will be running but still provisioning some resources, you have to wait for the resources to be provisioned and wait until the icon or the text is just saying running, nothing else. So once your virtual machine is running, running, you can now select it and by, you can select it by clicking on any column except the name the name column because if you click the name column you will access some of the properties of the virtual machine so you select it and you can click connect on at the button it will download an rdp file which is the kind of file that will allow you to connect through remote desktop to that particular machine all you have to do is click on that new file that's been downloaded and a remote desktop connection will begin now you may need to provide some access to this particular file this particular computer you can trust it you created it and it's Azure believe me it's it's trustworthy so you can trust it and when you are asked for your credentials click on use another account because you're not going to use the account that you have on your local computer you do have to provide the username and password that you set when you created your virtual machine so hopefully you remember those credentials now on the username field you have to click local computer i'm sorry local account to specify that the account that you're going to use is local to that machine otherwise the domain is set to Microsoft account as you can see right here by clicking local account and this slash uh, you're going to set the domain to the local account as you can see here now with that domain set you can write your username and your password and if the credentials are correct you should be able to connect if the connection fails it's probably because your remote machine or your virtual machine is still provisioning something even though it may say running if you have just started it it may still be provisioning something so just give it a couple of minutes and try the connection again uh, it may ask for more uh, permissions so again you can trust and even ask to not ask uh, these things again for connections to this computer because Azure and yourself are trustworthy so you can just click OK to everything and there it goes you are connected through remote desktop to that account so as you can see here I actually am in the remote desktop and this is Windows Server and it was very quick because I didn't have to set anything and in fact if I come to the menu and go to all apps I should be able to see yeah everything about SQL Server 2014 already installed in here and that was pretty fast I mean my machine was ready in about 30 minutes maybe even less and I have SQL Server 2014 installed and I have of course Windows Server 2012 R2 installed and everything so yeah that's it that's how you connect to your virtual machine and of course if you want to exit your virtual machine you will usually have this thing pinned uh, you know if this little icon in here is pinned oh, I'm using the virtual machine uh, magnifier anyway if this thing right here is pinned you will always see this blue I don't know kind of file or something in here always pinned but if you unpin it all you have to do is move the mouse up and it will appear again and you can always minimize or close the connection and of course when you close the connection the virtual machine is still running all you did 
was close the virtual machine or close the remote desktop where the virtual machine is still open running. If you want to stop it, because all this time per hour the virtual machine is using your credit, so if you want to stop it once in a while, you just have to come back to Azure, select your virtual machine, and at the bottom of the page you can set shutdown. Now it will ask for confirmation, so you can just click yes, and it will be stopped. Now when it is stopped, it's not using any of your credit. Now just keep in mind, especially when you start configuring things about your network, that shutting down does not lose the IP address. You will maybe use your IP address, uh, a static IP address if you configure something like a mail server or something. But restarting the virtual machine will actually reset the IP address. So if you're using starting IP addresses inside of your virtual machine, don't ever restart it or you will just lose it. It will still be there somewhere, but you will be unable to connect to it. So if you use static IP addresses, bear in mind that never restart. Maybe shut down, never restart. Do you want to learn more about Microsoft Azure? Do you want to learn more about cloud computing? Or do you want to learn more about virtual machines? such as adding virtual hard drives to your virtual machines. Maybe you want to learn a little bit more what cloud computing is, or how to create Azure websites, how to create cloud services, or learn a little bit more about virtual machines. Maybe you want to learn how to host that spaces in the cloud, and of course how to manage all the services with a big variety of management tools. If so, just go to the link below or write that link in your screen on your browser and get my Azure course for only $9. That's a huge discount from $29. So if I were you, I would click on that link right now. In fact, what are you doing here? Go ahead and click that button.